how's everybody doing out there? Good afternoon. What a wonderful day to do math. It's wet, it's rainy, no reason to be outside, but there's a good reason to be inside. Yes, AP Calculus Review. For the student, that's you, who's going to take the AP Calculus exam, which is in how many days? <laughs> Hello? 84 days. <laughs> there it is, 84 days. How about that? 84 days, which is uh, 12 weeks away. Is that right? That's right. 84 divided by 7. 12 weeks. Less than three months. May 10th. Be there. You to call in today to answer calculus questions. The phone number is 972 925 3123. Do we have a caller? <laughs> That's a pretty good sound effect. And I bet this is Ann from Molina. Yeah. Is, is this is this Ann Eckenrod? Uh-huh. Eckenrod. Eckenrod. I'm rude. sorry, I didn't mean to be rude, Miss Eckenrod. Like you drive on a road. Right. Oh, it's Eckin Road. Yeah. So I was rude, Miss Eckenrod. <laughs> yeah. There you are. I know I know as the big cookie. Hey, what did you do today in class, Miss Eckenrod? Uh, we did a six weeks test over um, the whole six weeks. The whole six weeks. Yeah. Wow. Did did that have E stuff on it? Yes, it did. Let me guess. You're going to give me an E problem. Okay, you, here's an E problem for you. Huh. Okay, here's an E problem. I'm going to give you a couple of them real quick. Okay? What okay. It, tell me the answer real quickly to that. Um... E to the three, one third. One third. E, um, bump it up. Wait. There's no bump in here. E. Oh gosh. E to the three x. So right, the pretty way it's e to the three x over three. Right, or one third e to three x. The reason. Oh, yeah, for the reason oh. why, and because there's no bumping up here. You, I know. you only bump up There's when that's an X. Right, variable. exactly. Exactly. A constant rate to variable. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Ah. Excellent job. Call in again, okay, Jaguar. Who's Come next? On. Scott? We lost him. Who's next? Hello? Hello? Christy? Yeah. Christy, from what school? Brian Adams. Brian Adams? Yeah. How you doing? Fine, how are you? Is this Miss Knapp? Yes, it is. How you doing? Fine, how are you? Good. You, I, have you have you haven't done East stuff yet, have you? Uh, no, we've done uh, natural log stuff. Natural log stuff. Okay. Uh -huh. So you're ready for a uh, question? Yes, I am. Okay, here you go. Tell me when this function is increasing. When is this function increasing? Uh, when the slope is positive. When the slope is positive. What? And how do you, what's another word for slope? Homer? What's another derivative. word? Derivative. Derivative. <laughs> okay. So what is the derivative? Uh, derivative of what? Hold on. Oh, um, x times... 1 over x. Right, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Very good. Uh, minus natural log of x uh -huh. times 1. Okay, uh, all yeah. over? x squared. Excellent. So this simplifies to 1 minus natural log of x all over x squared. Uh -huh. And now, when is, so that's the derivative, right? That makes uh -huh. sense. Now, we want to know when the derivative is positive. If for a fraction to be positive, either the numerator and denominator both have to be negative or they both have to be positive. Uh -huh. What do we know about the denominator? It'll never be negative. Right, it'll never be negative. Excellent. And since zero, the domain for natural log, x has got to be greater than zero anyway, the domain for this, the derivative, the denominator is always positive. 
So we want to make sure we want, so this whole thing is positive when the numerator is positive. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know if you've actually gone through this yet. Miss Arthur, has she gone through it yet? No, sir. Okay. Well, we're going to go through something with you. There's two things you need to know. Do you know what the natural log of 1 is equal to? Um, zero. Zero, right. And the natural log of E is equal to 1. Okay. Okay. So just remember those two things for natural log of 1 and natural log of E. And so if the natural log of E is 1, and E is a number like 2.7 something, uh -huh. So what we have to do is set the numerator greater than zero. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, it's one is greater than natural log of x. And if you you know solve for x here, you could you know the answer for x here is e. What you would do is sort of exponentiate both sides. I know I'm confusing you. Yeah. So <laughs> x the the point is x has to be less than e. The reason why is because if we know the natural log of E is 1, anything greater than E, this would be greater than 1. Uh -huh. Because e, the natural log, as the numbers get higher, the natural log of that gets greater. So anything greater than the natural log of E is going to be greater than 1, so the answer has to be less than E. So, but just try to remember these two things right here, and Miss Arthur will <laughs> go over the rest, okay? Okay. All right, good job, Christy. Okay, thank you. No, oh, thank you. Jennifer! Yes. Hey, Jennifer, what, is this Jennifer Burr? Yes. How you doing? Good. Are you feeling better? Um, a little bit better. Thank you for asking. How did you know I was sick? Ms. Hammond told us. Okay, well, we're doing the best we can. Okay. Did I, you get a haircut? I did. Do I, I got one last week. Do I look a little peaked? Mm, <laughs> no. Okay, well, there. Good. Okay, three, three quick, um, I want three quick answers. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, here you go. <coughs> these three, and give me these three answers right here. I can't really see our TV because it's all blurry. Oh, okay. E to the three x is the first one. The der what the derivative of e to the three x is what? Three e to the three x. Right. The derivative of e to the three x is three e to the three x. Mm-hmm. What's the integral of e to the one half x? Be careful. Um, is uh, one half. No, 2 e to the 1 half x. Okay, so it's very good. How did you know that was 2 so quickly? Because you have to, you have to, uh, you have to have your du, which is 2, which is 1 half. Right, and so you make the 2 out. Excellent. That is very good. That is very good. Okay, now what about this one real quick, Jennifer? e to the 1 half x. The derivative of 1 half e to the 1 half x is what? Um... It's one fourth e to the one half. Right okay. now, okay. No help in the background here. What's the answer to this one? Hey, <laughs> I heard someone in the background. That's butters. Butters, butters. You, butters. You're only eleven percent fat, butters. <laughs> I don't okay. know where I came up with that. What's the answer to this, Jennifer? Um, I, it's, our TV's blurry. I can't see it. It's the integral of one half e to the one half x. It's um, one half x e to the one half. Actually, it would just be e to the one half x. Oh. Uh, 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 um, well, actually, would it be? What's the der it, how, you, how would we check our answer? I take a derivative. Right, and what's the derivative of e to the one half x? E to the one half x. Right, so it's e to the one half x times one half. Yeah. Times one half. So in that fun so these are good drills for you to do to make sure that you're profi make sure that you're proficient in your ease. Thank you. Can I get a bell? <gasps> it's over here. Thank you. Hey no. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank, thank you. you. What's uh, Miss Harmon serving out there today? Oh, she has um, Lay's potato chips, um, regular and sour cream and onion, Big Newtons, and Chewy Chips Ahoy. Ahoy. Wow, this is a whole <laughs> plethora of stuff. Hey, you know, so sour cream and onion potato chips, don't they give you nasty breath, though? Wow. I mean, maybe not you, but, you know. Yes, they do. Okay, just wanted to share that. All right, well, we'll see you. At, uh, call back in again. Thank you. No, thank you. All right. The great James Miller? Yeah, it's me. Hey, man, I think I have a picture of you. Awesome. Uh, I think I do. I'm going to find one. What did you do in class today, Jimmy? Uh, we took a test. You took a test? Yeah, it was really hard. It was really hard? Yeah. How can it be hard with, uh, with you as uh, the fine student? 
Jimmy Miller, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's not me. Oh, is that you? No. no. I don't have a picture of you. Oh. Uh, I just have a picture of you. Oh, uh, we, we all want to see the picture of Gable that you have. Gable Vines? Is yeah. She, is she there? Yeah, she's here. She has to call in and I'll show it to you. It's when she calls in. Okay. Hey, uh. Oh, uh, Miss Irby really wants to see it. Uh, as soon as she calls in, tell her to call in next and we'll uh, okay. get it for her. All hey, right. how are you doing? Uh, how'd you do on the test today? Oh, I got 100. Okay. Well, that's good because I'm going to ask you a couple easy questions. Okay. I just want you to see if you can uh, do this. What? I Just tell me what the derivative of that is. That would be... Uh, Cosine over sine, so like three, <laughs> three tangent x. Okay, well, what's the first thing we want to do, Jimmy Miller, when we see this little thing out here? Bring it down. Well, yeah, but we really actually want to make it easier for us to see this, and we probably want to rewrite, rewrite it like that, because that's what it means, and yeah. now it might be a little bit easier to do. Okay, so... <laughs> It'll be uh, 3 tangent of x squared. Now, hey, Jimmy, what if you have y equal like 3x plus 1 to the fourth, what's the derivative of that? Uh, 4 times the 3, and then 3x plus 1 cubed. Times. But times the derivative of the inside, which is right. 3. Right, and you're doing the same thing here. When uh, you have some, so it's 3 times natural log to sine of x, all that squared, times the derivative of what's inside. And what's the derivative of what's inside? Tangent. Right. It's cosine over sine, which is what? Tangent. Cosine over Co-tangent. sine. Cotangent. Right. Cotangent. Co times the derivative of what's inside, which is cosine over sine or cotangent, right? So you had it right, but you just had to recognize it was in this form. Uh, okay. All right. Tell Gable to call it. Have Gable call in, and we'll uh, get that beautiful picture of her. Okay? Okay. Sure thing. All right. Good job, Jimmy. All right. Scott. What's up, Mr. Fleischer? Is this Kitna? It is. Hey, is uh, you got to tell David Ken. He blew that problem on the website. Oh, oh, by did. the way, for he those of you, uh, we, we do have, um, we're going to show you at about ten, five, ten minutes left in the show, we're going to show you the answers to last week's website. <laughs> we'll announce the winner of last week's website, and we'll give you the address to win more money. Uh, if you get the question right. Well, actually, he skipped out of physics this morning about 10 minutes early and came back and said he just made $10. And well, just... tell him that he really was not even close. Yep. Okay, uh, Scott Kitna. Yes. Ready for a good problem here? Don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass you? i got to give you a hard problem uh, because okay. you had a Kitna. Did you, were you uh, nice to Allison on, your, uh, on the date? Yeah, we didn't have much fun, though. It was just too, too hot, too sweaty, and too noisy. Okay, thanks for sharing. Hey, at if the, the dance. If the gra are you at home or at school? We're at school. Oh, good. If the graph shown above is y equals f prime of x, then for what value of x does f have a relative minimum? F prime changes from negative to positive. Okay, so f, excellent. F has a relative minimum when f prime changes from negative to positive. That's a fine job, Scott Kittner. So you can even make this little chart to get full credit. You want to know when it changes from negative to positive. Two, at two. So when f prime changes from negative to positative, it's at two, and where else? At negative two. Yeah, it's it's or negative. negative it's at negative up until negative two, and then, or actually negative, negative three. three. Yeah, I'm listening to you. See what you know. That's <laughs> the other that's positive from negative one, and then it's negative up until two, and then it's positive. So if you show this on the AP exam and indicate this, and indicate this, you. Uh, could just write down negative 3 and 2 as your answers. You show them this beautiful looking chart, and you'd be on fire. On fire. On fuego. Yes. That was a fine job. That was too easy for you. Call in again. I'll get you a harder problem. I will do it. All right. Great job, Scott. Fumika okay. Capadilla. Hi. How you doing? Fine. How are you? No, I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. Did you enjoy that last problem? Uh-huh. You did, really? Because I want to ask you something that looks similar, but it's really not. Okay. Okay, you ready? Okay. You excited? Sure. Fumika Capadilla. You know, most people have trouble pronouncing your name, but not me, because <laughs> it's Boo Mika Capadilla. Um, 
what is, if this is the graph of f prime, when is f concave down? Down. Wait, hold on. We want some inspiration. And the inspiration will come from Miss Arthur! <laughs> She asked where you got that. Tell her she has to figure it out. You have to figure it figure out. Figure it out and she gets a prize. You get a prize if you figure it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Where the slope is negative. I'll give her a hint. Hey, look, look, look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Is it... Is it um, from... Hey, in general, when is F concave down, Bumika Cappadia? When um, it's negative. When, what? Don't say it! <laughs> when F prime is negative. When what? F prime when is what? negative. When what? Double prime. Double prime is negative. It's when F double prime is negative. So, it's, so you want to know, you can, F is conch down when F double prime is negative, right? Right. Okay, so it's when F, so what, if this is F prime, what do we know, when, when do we know about F double prime? When do you integrate, I mean derive F prime. Okay, and what's another word for derivative? Slope. Slope! <laughs> so it's from negative 2 to like, what's that, 0. Very good, it's from negative 2 to 0. And what you could also do, you know it would be really beautiful if it's an AP exam, you could also do something like this. You could say up until f, that f prime is increasing, f double prime is positive, and then it's uh, to zero, it, f prime is decreasing, f double prime is negative, and that's increase, increasing positive after that. So the concavity of f is up, down, up. Right. Okay, and that would be beautiful. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Omika. Thank you. Okay, hey, great job. Do you under remember that stuff? Yeah, it's coming back. It's all it's all coming back to me now. That is a song that Miss Arthur likes by Celine Dion circa nineteen ninety six. Okay. Uh call in again. That was fun. Okay. Right, bye. bye. Me? No. Nee, what's going on? Nothing. Nee, you didn't get the answer right when you but we're gonna go over it at, at ten to five. Okay? What? On the website, didn't you uh, try to get that answer? Oh, me? yeah, yeah, I tried to get the answer. Uh, yeah, you we're, email we're me? Gonna, we're going to go over it, okay? Okay. All right. Hey, uh, what did you do in class today? Oh, I was fair. doing science fair judging today. You were doing what? Science fair judging. Science fair judging? You didn't, you didn't go to class? No. <laughs> well, nee, I missed calculus today. Nee, uh, for that, you get a tough problem. Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I got Miss Johnson right here. Ah, <laughs> she's leaving. Oh, no. Okay, here you go. She's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> she's leaving me. That's not. That's leaving me stranded. Okay, leaving you stranded. Same type of thing here. We're focusing on, uh, I don't know what this is called. Graphical uh, analysis, something like that. If is there's it, a graph of F prime me, uh -huh, when does it? F have a point of inflection? The second derivative is set equal to zero. Wait, that, now, you know what? That's a... Uh, that's a common mistake. That's not exactly right. It's not when the, because let me prove, let me show you something. If you have y equals uh, x to the fourth, which you know the graph of x to the fourth looks like this. Mm -hmm. What's the second derivative? What's the first derivative? 4x to the cube. What's the second cube. derivative? 12x squared. So when does the second derivative equal zero? X equals zero. When X is zero, huh? that's not a point of inflection. A point of inflection when is when F changes. Oh, okay. Concave when X changes Change concavity, concavity, right? Uh -huh. So it's not when the second derivative equals zero. It's when the second derivative changes signs, which can happen at zero. It can happen at zero, but it doesn't necessarily always equal zero. Okay. So the correct answer is F has a point of inflection when the second derivative changes sign from negative to positive or positive to negative because that's when f would change concavity oh, okay so, so I mean, in this case earlier. it doesn't matter in this particular case it doesn't matter but i wanted you to uh 
Look at that. So it's, it is when F double prime changes signs. Okay. So when would that be? At negative 2 and uh, 0. At negative 2 and 0 because that's when the slope changes, changes from positive to negative, right? Negative uh -huh. 2 and 0, right? Uh -huh. And what you could do is drawing this little chart to show that. You could do F double prime, F prime, and just like uh, we did with the great Bumika Cappadia. Uh, positive, negative, positive, and then F double prime, uh, increasing, decreasing, increasing, positive, negative, positive, and then the concavity of F changes from up, down, and up. Do you understand the difference between changes signs and just not when it's equal to zero, right? Uh-huh. Makes sense? Yeah, no, it does. Okay, if you call it again, I'll show your picture. Okay. <laughs> hey, great job, Nee. Great uh, job. Marlene! <laughs> TJ! Woo! <laughs> TJ, okay. All right, TJ, okay. No, TJ's better than okay. Yes. You know, better, do yeah. I, ask, ask um, Mr. Wynn, do I, do I have your picture? Um... I don't think I have Marlene's picture. Yes, we sent it an email. All right, hold on. I have I have Crystal and Julian's and Julian. And We're all like sitting in a, in a table. Marlene. There you are, right there. All right, we got it. Uh oh, hold on. Auto. Is that it? We got it. There you are. Oh, take it off. No. <laughs> The guys from Skyline wanted to see you. No, take it off. No, man, I tell you. And you, the fact that you're sitting next to Redding May, we won't hold that against you, okay? Okay. How you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm all glad. Right. Are you uh, nervous? Yes, yeah, so my first time. I'm really nervous too. So that's that, that makes two of us. Hey, what'd you do in class today with Mr. Great Mr. Wynn? Well, uh, we're doing integrals right now. Integrals. Yes. What type of integrals? Uh, uh, natural log integrals. Oh man, those are hard. Can I, can I give you yes, one of those? Yes. <coughs> okay. Here we go. Natural log integral. You ready? Yes. I need to, need to get organized here my, my paper. Okay. So natural log integral. So then you would know how to do something like this then is what you're saying. Right big, real big. Okay. You're saying you would know how to do that, right? A. Okay, let u be x squared plus 1 and d of u be 2x. Okay, excellent. u is equal to x squared plus 1 and okay. du is equal to 2x dx. Okay, then 1 half. Okay, so 1 half. So be 2x. Hold on. Be 2x over 1 half of du over u. Excellent. It's 1 half of du over u because 1 half of du is just x dx. That is 1 half du and that's u. And what's the integral of du over u? Uh, uh, the log natural of, that's the value of x plus, plus u. Right. So it's, it's just 1 half natural log of u or one just half. 1 half natural log. Hey, I got a question for you. How come I only need, Marlene, how come I only need parentheses and not absolute values here? Because it's positive. Right. Because it's, positive. it's always positive. Excellent. And Marlene, how come I could do this instead as the answer? Because it's squared. Because why? Because it's a one half and it comes back. To right. It could be natural log of this to the one half, which is the square root of. Marlene, that deserves. Patriots. Okay. Go Patriots. Okay. Go Patriots. <laughs> hey, great job. Okay. Call okay. it again. All right. All right. Butters. Butters, you hung up on me, Butters. Hi. How you doing? Butters. Is this Bill Jana? Yeah. Butters. 11% fat. That's it. 11%. That's pretty good. I think it's actually 11 grams. Huh? I don't know. It's something. Butter. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you got, hey, you guys, you know, you Longhorns have to keep up. Yes, I did. You know what? You tricked me because I forgot to integrate the last thing. What? 
What are you talking about? The problem of the week. You tricked me on there. I didn't trick you. I just... Yes, you did. Because I... I had the function and I forgot to integrate. Butters, you missed it, Butters. But that's okay. I know, I know. Forgetting to integrate is no excuse. It's like ignorance of the law. <laughs> okay. You know? And uh, let me give you a good problem here, though. You ready? Uh, yeah, give something that's really big because we can barely see. Really big. Well, what's the problem out there, W.T. White? I don't know. The TV's kind of weird. The TV's kind of weird. Okay. Oh, my God. I can't. This is so weird. We okay. barely see you. Well, it's all right. <laughs> all right. Here we go. The, uh, you see this graph? Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. If this is F double prime. Okay. There's a second derivative. Okay. When does F prime? Prime have a relative mass. Um, hold on, give me one second. Ooh, hold on. Um, it should be. I think it's at um. Is that like a regular relative max, right? Yeah. When when would f prime have a relative max? I think go think up about, and down. So right. Excellent. Fun. Excellent. Positive and then negative. Is it at negative one? Wait, wait. What's positive and what's negative? Uh, the the slope would. Uh, the slope of f prime, which is what? Right, which is like the second derivative. Excellent. And if this is the second derivative, right, when so, would this have a relative max? So when po goes from positive to negative, so it's at negative one, isn't it? Excellent. Hey, butters. Butters. Yeah. I'm gonna knock you down to temp. Knock you down to ten percent fat. Okay. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Let's look at this. What she said real quickly again. She knew f prime has. And to, to, on the AP exam, you'd have to show your answer, and you could write out what you said. But but is, I would recommend just doing this little chart thing. And you saw that. Well, yeah. On free response, I always write that little chart because Miss Harmon wants us to. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's excellent. So it's negative. Uh, negative. I'm sorry. It's. It, There's a negative three and then a negative one and a positive two. You have three zeros. Okay, so we we actually hold on for a second here. The uh, if this is if this is f double prime, right? Yeah. So if it is f double prime, we know that f double prime. I have this backwards here. Yeah. You thank do. you. I uh, thanks for helping me, God. I needed I needed your help and I got nothing. The um, I'm just teasing. This it's negative, and then until two. Yeah. And it's, it's positive, it's positive, again, positive two. which means F prime is going to, there's a min and then a max. It's decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. increasing and right. you can put this back or either way. Yeah. But if you just show this and then write down negative one is rel max mm -hmm. for F prime. If you just show this and put down this answer. If you do it a little neater than I do, you'll yeah. get full credit. <laughs> All right? Okay. Hey, Butters, great job. Thank you. Angel, what's your last name? Hello? Angel Acosta? Yeah. What's going on? Nothing much. There he is. Angel Acosta. How you doing? Angel. Hey, Angel, you want a hard problem? Well, I guess. That's right. Oh, no. what, who said no in the background? Uh, that was Alma. Who's trying to protect you? Alma. Alma I thought she's. I thought I was involved with uh, Joseph. <laughs> Alma, what's going on, Alma? <laughs> Alma, you're. Uh, I'm going to tell Joseph. He's right here. Oh, there you go. All right, I see how that works. <laughs> hey, I'm going. This is. I'm going to try to trick you. Okay. I want you to do these two problems. I want you to do this one, and I want you to do this one. Do this one first. So it's going to be e to a natural log of 2. Wait, say that again. e to natural log of 2. Because the integral of e to the x is e to the x, so it's, it's e to the natural log of 2. Minus e to the 0. Okay, and what's e to the natural log of 2? Uh, it's just 2. Excellent, excellent. What's e to the 0? Uh, it's just 1. Very good. 
You are truly Angel Acosta. All right. All right. Now what's the? Now this one's a little tougher. What's the integral of e? E to the x. E what? E times x. Yeah, because what? <laughs> hey, what's the integral of three? Three x. Right. What's the integral of four? Four x. What's the integral of k? Uh. Kx. What's the integral of e? Ex. Right. It's just a constant. Yeah. So it's just e. Yeah, just uh, e to times it. <laughs> hey, e I was just. Hey, what is that, people? Time. No <laughs> problem here. So now, what's the answer? So e times natural log of two minus e times zero. Which is what? Which is zero. So the answer is e natural log of two. Hey, can we simplify this at all? If we wanted to, is there any other way? Uh, is there any other form we could write this in besides e times natural log of 2 or natural log of 2 times e? Is there any other form we could write this in? Uh, quantity natural log of 2 to the e. Very good. It'd be, well, actually, it's not quantity. It's just natural log of 2 to the e. Oh, uh, there is a difference because a natural log of b is natural log of b to the a. All right. So, hey, Angel, that's a great job. That was a hard problem. You did a great right. job. Hey, Justin, what's your last name? Esser. Justin Esser. Yes. The great Nick Esser's younger sibling. Right. How you doing? Pretty good. What's uh, Miss Arthur serving out there today? Uh, so, what was Poppy it? Cake. Poppy seed cake. Poppy seed cake? Yeah. So we can all have, yeah. Yeah. Well, who's that in the background talking? Is that Casey? No, that's Emily. Emily? How come Emily doesn't call it and she's just there for the cake? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Okay, here's a, uh, back to the same theme we were doing earlier. If this is, if this is F prime, when is F concave up? When is F concave up? When the uh, slope of that is positive. When the slope of that of is positive, because in general, Justin, it's when F is concave up when blank. When what? In general. F double prime. <laughs> positive. What's that? When F double prime is positive. When F double prime is positive, right? And F double prime is positive when the slope of F prime is uh, is positive, right? Yes. So, and, and when is that, did you say? Do what? What's the correct answer? Uh, what is Yeah, zero to negative two. Zero to negative two? Yes. Okay, zero to negative two? No. Uh, uh, um, positive. Where is that From That's why it's zero to positive. It's infinity. always good to do this because this helps you sort of focus. So if you write down this, the con and you see that the concavity of F, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is positive, positive. Negative, negative, positive. positive. The concavity is up, up, down, and up. So therefore, if you just take a look at this, you could see that F is concave up from negative infinity to negative two. But if you show this, it's correct answer, and also from zero to Positive infinity. Right. Because that's because the F prime is increasing, so that means F double prime is positive. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Very exciting. Hey, great job. Fine job. All right, thanks. Is this Kyle Reagan? This is Kyle Reagan. You know, I didn't even come up with a hard problem. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm going to have to think of one on top of my head here. I don't get cocky. You can't here. beat me. Well, I will. You call in next. You haven't called in all the time here. I'm ready for you the first three weeks. What? Yeah, I got right. more important stuff to do. Hey, you know, you got nothing more important than AP Calculus. <laughs> okay, hot shot. Here you go. Tell me the answer to this. You, I'm not an idiot. You can't integrate that. You can't integrate it? There's, I could get, you can get the answer to that's this. A, that's an identity, silly. <laughs> all right, all right. <sighs> All so, right. So, well, how would you uh, how would you change that? Well, call it again. I'm going to think of a problem. That's the power minute. reduction formula. You well, what is that reduction formula, <sighs> smart guy? You do one plus the cosine of two theta 
or 2x in this case, all over 2. Yeah, I just let's instead of all over 2, let's just call it 1 half, yeah. a little easier. So, real quickly, what's the <laughs> integral of that? That'd be 1 half x plus, I believe that would be. Careful. 4 minus 4 Careful. sine 2x. Wait, hold on. What's the answer to this? Uh, negative, negative one-fourth sine 2x. Negative or positive? Negative. Negative or positive? Oh, positive. Ah. Gotcha. Uh. Okay, Kyle Reagan. Yo. I want you to answer this question, but you're not going to be able to answer it right off the bat. Okay. Even you. Okay. All right. The, um, you know how, and this is something to think about here. This is, and you know, we, you know, uh, Kyle, we have questions of the week on our website where we're giving away money. And really? You, you didn't, you didn't even uh, try to answer Ms. last Bradford week. Ms. Bradford just told me about it today. Okay, well here, you know, here, but this one, this okay. one I want you to think about and see if you can get anybody else, see if they can get an answer for next week real quickly. Here. All right. You know how like, um, like e to the y is equal to x. You know that's like the natural, that's y is equal natural log of x. Sure. And we also know that, I mean, this is the natural log of x. This is the same thing as y. Yeah. And then also the uh, integral from uh, the natural log of x, we also know, is the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t, which is an accumulation of area. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, this is a logarithmic exponential function is like an algebraic thing and this is like an accumulation of area mm -hmm. how is it possible how is it at all possible that these could be possibly the same when you plug in a number for x here that the accumulation of area of 1 over t and when you plug in a number for x here and get 2.7 to raise to something you get an answer for y well how, how could they how could these two possibly be the same? They, they change the same. They have the same derivative. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, <laughs> you're, you're close. You have to come up with one more thing, all right? Try to figure it out, okay? Uh, it, it, it's not, you're right. They have the same derivative, but there's a, one other part to it. Kyle, that is excellent, and next week I will stump you. But there's one other, <laughs> there's two, uh, Kyle, there's, Kyle, yeah. uh, y equals x squared and y equals x squared plus 1 have the same derivative, and they're not the same function. Well, they have the same starting condition. Fine. Okay, good job. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get you next Ms. week, Bradford Kyle. Sends her love. I'm going to get you next week. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Is this Josh Witt? Josh Newton. Josh Newton? Yeah. How you doing? Good. That was Kyle Reagan. I come from the same room? No. Where are you calling from? The Teacher's Planning Center. You come from the, why are you in the teacher's planning center? Because we're going to have a debate team meeting today in here. Ah, what are you going to debate about? The topic. The topic? Yeah. What is the topic? Increased reliance on technology undermines the quality of life in America. Yeah. It's, it's uh, AP Calc. Wait, say that again. What is it now? Increased reliance on technology increased undermines. What? Wait, increased what? Increased reliance on, on technology undermines the quality of life in America. You know, it's, it's interesting because, you know, if you think about it like uh, 50 years ago, you know, I mean, just think about the home life. This is a calculus show, Fleischer. Who is that? Kyle. Ky tell Kyle to, tell, tell him to be ready for next week, okay? <laughs> the, hey, uh, real quickly here, hey, we're talking about, you know, 50 years ago, you know, they used to have to cook in like, at home in, a, in an oven that dinner took three hours and like everyone had to wait for that. Now. I think just the analysis of the microwave and the oven and how it has disrupted the family life would be a good analysis of that. Hey, Greg. <laughs> yeah? Do me a favor. Who is this? This is Emory Smith. Okay. Do me, uh, you see that sign behind you? Yeah. AP Calculus? Oh, you want me to do calculus? Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. All right, all right, Emory. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hey, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, real funny, real funny. Okay, um...
Mr. Newton? I'm work, oh, trying to work it out on paper real quick. Um, do we want to move the, let's see. Is that going to be by parts? What's that? Are we going to have to do this integration by parts? Nope. Nope. I hope not. Okay. Hey, Josh, you want to hear a little secret? Sure. Whenever you have an integral and there's just one e in the integral, in other words, there's no e, there's just one little e raised to an exponent, about 99, 95% of the time, set u equal to the exponent and it works out. Now, now, if you have more than one e in the integral, it doesn't work out. Like if you had something like e to the, um, like e to the cosine x, all over e to the sine x plus one, you wouldn't set u equal to the exponent. But if you just have one e in the integral, set u equal to the exponent, usually it works out. Okay, and then your derivative of square root of x is one half square, over the, one over two square root of x. Uh-huh. And so what's the answer here? Um, where are they you get Emory Smith okay. on the line? Okay. Yep. Emory, what's the answer from here? Uh, 2e to the square root of x. Very good. Excellent job, Emory. Because this is actually 2e to the u du, because 2 times du is just dx over square root of x, right? Exactly. So the integral of that is 2e to the u, or 2e to the square root of x plus c. Right, Emory? Uh-huh. Okay, Emery. Yes, sir. Fine job. Be nice. Thank you. All right. Hey, good job. Stick to the calculus stuff. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> ben. Hey there. <laughs> hey there. Who, what school? Woodrow Wilson. Oh, it's Ben Wright. Yeah. What's going on? Not much. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. How are you? Have we got a picture of you. Have I shown your picture before? Oh, yeah. But Where's Gable? Oh, she's sitting right behind me. Hey, just put Gable on for a second. Yeah, go just for put it. Put her on for a second, and I'll just get her on for a second. Hi, Mr. Fleischer. Gable, we got this great picture of you here. <laughs> yeah, I heard. Please don't put it on. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Gable Barnes! What, Gable, what grade is that? <laughs> Gable, what grade is that? Third. Third grade. Yes, that was third grade. Fifth? Third. Third? Do you yes. know what? Do you know, I heard that in third grade, <laughs> you were next to Ben Wright. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to hand the phone back to Ben so okay, he can what? answer this. Wait, hold on, there you go. <laughs> Wait, it's a nice little couple, Gable. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Fleischer. Hey, you're welcome. Okay, here's Ben. Okay, okay, yeah. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> the, um, hello? Hey. Hey. <laughs> it's a fine picture, don't you think? I, I think so. It's a masterpiece. A masterpiece? Mm-hmm. Okay. What? What? Uh, how, how are you doing? How'd you do on the test today? Hmm? How'd you do on the test today? On the test today, oh, I think I just ripped it. You ripped it? Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this. What do you think this is? An integral sign. There you go. That's good. That's a good start. How would you do that? These are T's. Hmm. I would say that u is t to the fourth plus five. Uh huh. Oh wait, is that dx or dt? Oh, very good. Just seeing if you're catching that dt. Go ahead. Okay, and uh, du would be four t to the third uh, dx. Dx or dt? Dt. There you go. And uh, what? dx is du over du is 
Uh, DT is DU over 4T cubed. I like doing it like that also. No, not many people do it like that anymore. I don't know. It makes it easier to cancel out. I agree with you. And then we have what? It ends up being one fourth the integral of uh, one over oh, du over u. And the final answer is ln uh, one fourth ln of u. Which is hey, and why do we uh, not need absolute values here? Usually we need absolute because because it's all positive. Yeah, Wait. t to the fourth plus five is positive, right? Right. Fine job, fine job. Thank you. Great, Ben Wright, get, and uh, tell Gable we have her first grade picture next week. All right. You okay. want to tell her yourself? Well, uh, you can tell her. Okay. All right, thanks. All right. Hey, and, 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 don't forget, and don't forget to stay, and uh, uh, in, in about five minutes, we're going to go over last week's answer for the question of the week and uh, give you the information to get this week's question. Who's out there? This is Chris. Chris? Yes. What's your last name? Lee Wanig. Uh, you got to go away from the TV. It's too hard for us to hear. Uh, I'm on this Bradford cell phone. I, 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 don't, think, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, okay. Okay. You're gonna, we're gonna, we can't hear. I'm sorry. Hello? Hello? Travis? Hello? Travis Morrison? Yeah. Do you know who the Lizard King is? No, who's the Lizard King? You don't know who the Lizard King is? No. Ask uh, your parents who the Lizard King was. Okay. I'll uh, do that. Aunt, does Miss Arthur know who the Lizard King was? Huh? Ask Miss Arthur. Does she know who the Lizard uh, who's King the, Who's the Lizard King? She says she thinks it's some musician. Okay, and which musician would it be? Who, di who died July 4th, 1971. She's thinking. I don't know. Okay, well, <laughs> well, we'll work on that for next week, okay? Okay, we'll do that. Uh, how you doing, Travis? Morrison? Morrison? Who's the Lizard King? I don't know. Jim Morrison! Oh, uh, wow. Well. Okay. The doors! <laughs> yeah, the doors. Hey, oh, well, let's do a total time. distance problem since you like those. What? Total <laughs> distance. Okay, total distance problem. If the velocity, if the velocity is equal to, uh, let's t squared plus one. What's the total distance? There's a total distance traveled from. How about t equals zero to t equals three? Uh. Well, you, I guess you take the integral of velocity. But do you always take the integral of the velocity? Yes. What do you have to make sure, before you do that, what do you have to make sure first? Uh, you have to make sure that it doesn't go below the axis because... Right, excellent. And, and, this, and the velocity here is always positive, right? Huh? The velocity here is always positive. Oh yeah, because it, it doesn't go up. Yeah. Right. It's if the if but if this was like t squared minus four, then you're right. It would go below it. It would look something like this. Um, from zero to two, it would be negative, and from two to three, the velocity would be positive. So it'd be the, the integral from two to three minus the integral from zero to two, right? Yeah. But from here, we would only integrate from 0 to 3 at t squared plus 1 because why? Well, because it's all positive. Because the velocity is all positive. And what's the integral of t squared plus 1? Uh, t to the third uh, divided by 3 plus t. Okay, and it's from 0 to 3, so you just plug in 3, and you get 9 plus 3 minus 0 plus 0, so the answer is 12, right? Yeah. Travis Morrison, fantastic job. Hey, is Casey there? Uh, no, she's not with us right now. Because Casey is the winner of last week's contest. Uh, yay. As a matter of fact, the only two people who got it right were Casey Everett and Annalisa Calvert. But she's not here either. Well, if she's not there, she can't collect the money. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. 
I'll take it. Must be present. I'm just kidding. Just you, kidding. you can I, send I, it to me. I could send it to you. I, I don't want Miss Arthur to uh, get get violent here. Hey, Julie. Yes. Julie, this was the problem on the website last week. Oh, wonderful. Julie, what's your last name? Fane. Oh, hi, Julie. Fane, how you doing? Good. How are you? Fine. Thanks for asking. Wonderful. It said, "Let f be a function such that f." I know it's going to be hard for you to read. Uh huh. F, f double prime is six x plus eight. Okay. If the graph of f is tangent to the line three x minus y equals two, mm -hmm. at zero two, find the average value. Is that negative two or two? Uh, negative two. Okay. Find at the that. point zero negative two. So. If we had to do that, if we had to do that, then uh, what's the first, and this was, uh, and this is what Butters, I think Butters was complaining about. If we, we want to find the average value of F, so we got to find F, but before we find F, we got to find F prime. If F double prime, Julie, it's 6X yeah. plus 8. If F double prime is 6X plus 8, what do we know about F prime? The integrate. In, no, integrate, 6x plus 8. Right, and what's the answer to that? Uh, 6x squared, no, 3x squared, 3x squared plus 8x. Plus 8x plus C. Okay, tell him you have ordinate pairs. Uh, ordinate. <laughs> okay, well, who's talking oh, in the background? That's B. Is that Butters? Yes. Okay, Julie. Yes. L without Butters, okay. it says at the point zero 02, the uh -huh. tangent line is 3x minus y equals 2, or, or you could say y is equal to 3x, y is equal to 3x minus 2. So this is y is equal to 3x minus 2. Okay. So Wait. at the point 0, negative 2, this is the, equa the, slope, this is the equation Here's of the equation. 3. So at x equals 0, the slope is 3, right? Right. So c would be equal 3, so therefore the derivative would be 3x squared plus 8x plus, 8x plus, plus 3. Plus 3, plus 3 right. 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 Okay. Now we're going to integrate that again. And we're going to integrate that again. So we get x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x. We'll call it plus c again. You okay. can call that c1. c1, c2. c2. Right, very good. Wonderful. So that's f of x. Now how do we find f? How do we find this C. You, the, it's that order pair that we had from earlier. Right, zero, negative two. So we know that you plug in zero here, that C is negative two. So you got X cubed plus 4X, 4x. squared plus 3X minus two is F of X. And then what you do from there, you integrate. Right, again. Right, to find the average value, it's one over. B minus A times the integral from a to b of the function. Right. So therefore, <laughs> sing, the song for us. sing it, sing it for us, Julie. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll pass. And you can, and this is one half, but if you work it out, it. if you work it out, you'll see, as we did work it out. Yeah, it's over Oh, wow. You, if you work it out by hand, you'll get the correct answer is negative two thirds. Yes, yes okay. you will. And so that is the correct answer, which you could also, of course, check with your graphing calculator. Right. Pretty exciting stuff, don't you think? That was wonderful. Uh, did, you have a good t did you have a good time? Uh-huh. I did, too. So hopefully I can do it again sometime. Uh, that would be very nice. Oh, yeah. Thanks for uh, suggesting <laughs> that. Now, I'll introduce you to Emery Smith. He's a nice guy. Oh, okay. All right. Francisco? Yes. Hey, are you going to, uh, did, did, now did me, did you guys follow that answer? Yeah, I got it. You follow that answer okay? Yeah. Okay, and uh, and don't forget, uh, this is for the AP Calculus Question of the Week. The winner gets a $10 prize, but, but everyone who gets a correct answer gets thrown into a pool. <laughs> That's, I don't think that, that grammar is correct. Without any water. No, it gets thrown into a hat. All the names get thrown into a hat. At the end of the year, we're going to give $300 gift certificates, America Express gift certificates, which is just the same as cash to everybody who gets the correct answer. But the first person who actually, and this is up, will be up exactly at 5 o'clock. So if you try to get in too early, it doesn't work out. 
but uh, you get $10 the first person to answer correctly for this week's question. But you're, but you're more concerned about the question about you're about to get, right? Yeah. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. This is Francisco from Skyline, right? Yes. The great Francisco from Skyline. That's what I hear. Because, and what would, would you, uh, have you done ease yet? Yeah. I'm going to give you a really hard problem because I hear so many great things about you. I'm sorry, I'm going I'm to change this. E to the tangent x all over cosine squared x. It's e to the tangent x divided by cosine squared x. Yeah, and that's excellent because, you know, Francisco, when in doubt, whenever you have one E, about 90, 95% of the time, you'll set U equal tangent X, and magically things work out. So what's DU equal to? Secant squared. Secant squared X, right? Okay, yeah. now what do we do? Um, uh, e to the U. Um, DU. Uh, how do you know that so easily? Uh, because it's... Uh, Squared is one of our Man, Francisco, squared. you are on fire. And <laughs> fuego. You know what en fuego means? Yeah. <laughs> You're heating up. That's right, because that's one over cosine squared x, which that is really that's too easy for you. Have you seen have you seen this problem before? No. That's that's excellent. And the integral of e to the u is e to the u plus c. So it's e to the tangent x plus c. Francisco, that's that's awesome, man. That's a great job, really. A double bell. I think it's triple. Great job, Francisco. Thanks. Hey, Ruth. Hello. Ruth, how come you're not watching the same room as Francisco? Oh, uh, we have different phone lines, so we use different phones. I mean, different rooms for wow. them. Oh. Did you see him do that problem? Uh, yeah. That was a pretty hard problem, too, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Please okay, don't give me one like that. I'm going <laughs> to give you a, a better problem. Oh. Better as an easier or better as I don't know. You're going to have to tell me. Be careful, though. Is that e to the 4x? Okay. All right. Uh, of course, u is equal to 4x, right? Mm-hmm. And then du is equal to uh, 4. Okay. Now. Okay, now, yeah, I get the integral of e to the u. Okay. Hey, you know what? I'm going to give you multiple choice answers. You tell me which one is right. You ready? All right. Which of these is right? D. Which one? D. D? Yes. Okay, let's check now. If oh, it, oh, oh. If it, if, how, would, how do we know if we're right or not? Uh, you get the derivative. What's the derivative of e to the 4x plus c? Uh, that, that's, um, okay, now it's What's the derivative of e to the 4x plus c? e to the 4x plus c. It's 4e to the 4x, right? Yeah. Which is not that. Okay. Okay. All so right, what, so uh, next best would be E. It would be E, right, because if you take the derivative of that, you'll get one-fourth E to the 4x. And also, if you do it that way, you gotta, if it's a 4, you've got to move the one-fourth out, so it's one-sixteenth E to the U or E to the 4x plus C. Uh -huh. Okay, take a look at that. It's a good job, Ruth, okay? Thank you. Hey, fine, and make sure you uh, go in on the question of the week, all right? All right. www.apstrategies.org. All right. <coughs> Y'all, I hope... I hope that, uh, how much time do we have left? We have about 30 seconds left. Make sure you uh, write, write down the website, www.apstrategies.org. Hope you all have a good week. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye.